Good evening and welcome once again to another episode of Praying the Psalms in Lent. Each weeknight we're reading and reflecting together on a psalm and using that as a springboard for prayer for the world around us. Tonight we're going to be looking together at Psalm 72. So if you have a Bible or a Bible app then you may want to turn to it now or there is a link with this video for you to find the psalm. But to begin, we're going to light a candle together. And if you have one at home, then you can light yours as well. And we light our candles as a very practical reminder of the light of Christ that shines in the darkness of our world. So as I enter prayer now, I pause to be still, to breathe slowly, and to recenter my scattered thoughts upon the presence of God. Dear Father, as I offer myself to you in this moment, help me to turn away from my own small self-centered view of the world and to see your view of me and of your world. I invite you through your Holy Spirit to reshape my soul, that I may respond to the world and people around me with your compassion. Amen. Well, I hope that you are enjoying this nightly uh, rhythm of uh, reading and praying the Psalms together. If you've been with us from the beginning, when we started this series in April of last year, um, <clears throat> when we come to the end of our second season uh, of doing this, next Friday, a week on Friday, we'll have read 78 Psalms together and spent something like 12 hours in prayer for our world. 12 hours of prayer. That is significant because our praying is significant. Prayer changes things. Your prayers make a real difference. Not only do they affect your own life, but they can also affect the course of history. Now how providence and prayer work together is a mystery. But in some extraordinary way, our prayers affect the outcome of events. God is sovereign and works out his purposes through history, yet amazingly, he has made it possible for you and me to be involved in the process. What a privilege. Tonight's Psalm 72 is King David's uh, prayer for uh, his son and successor, Prince Solomon. The psalm finishes with the statement, this concludes the prayers of David, son of Jesse. And it seems like this psalm is a bit of a, a passing of the baton, a handing over of responsibility of kingship from father to son. And so David prays for Solomon. And his prayer for the heir to his throne is a strong reminder of the high calling of kingship. Yet, what David prays for Solomon here goes uh, beyond what is humanly attainable. For example, verse five, he will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations. Or verse eight, his reign is eternal and universal. Ultimately, of course, this prayer was only truly fulfilled in the Messiah, God's son, Jesus Christ. But this psalm is a prayer for blessing on the king and that through him all the people will be blessed with prosperity. The good leader will be concerned about poverty and justice. Please stand up for the poor, help the children of the needy, come down hard on the cruel tyrants as the message translates verse 4. It's also a prayer that in his foreign policy all nations will be blessed through him. And David says, may people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. 
it's clear that God's blessing on the leader will come as people pray for him. Now, how this works, we, we don't know, but it shows that praying really can make a difference, praying for people in authority. And in his providence, God takes our prayers and uses them to bring blessing. And I think that's why the Apostle Paul writes uh, a very specific and important instruction to all members of the church, that's you and me, uh, echoing some of what David uh, prays here. Paul writes, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Saviour. And let's not forget that when Paul was writing, he was encouraging prayer for the Roman emperors who oppressed the church. So we don't have to agree with the leader that we're praying for. It's not about praying for the person that we voted for, but the person who is the leader, whether we like them or not. In our wee country, uh, that means praying for Michelle O'Neill and Arlene Foster, or Sinn Féin and DUP with equal love and concern. So together, let's read David's psalm, and then we'll use it as an opportunity to pray for our leaders. Psalm 72. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, the hills, the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy, and may he crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days may the righteous flourish, and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him with gifts. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. May corn abound throughout the land. On the tops of the hills may it sway. May the crops flourish like Lebanon and thrive like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. Then all nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and Amen. This concludes the prayers of David, son of Jesse. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that although you are sovereign over the past, the present and the future, you have chosen to allow us to participate in shaping history through your gift of prayer. Thank you, Father, for the immense privilege and responsibility that prayer gives us. Thank you that our prayers make a difference and that for some wonderful reason we can especially please you by praying for those in authority and those who would come into positions of authority. So tonight we pray especially for our leaders whom you have set over us in government and the church. 
Lord, we give you thanks for our Queen Elizabeth, above all for her clear faith in Christ and the many decades of peace that we have enjoyed in her reign. We pray for blessing upon her at this time of tumult in her royal family. We can't know if she has prayed for Charles as David prayed for Solomon, but we pray for blessing on Charles as our future king. And above all, that he may submit to you for your guidance in all he says and does. We pray for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson as he seeks to prosper and guide our fractured and divided United Kingdom out of Covid restrictions and has to deal with Scottish demands for independence and Northern Irish demands to resolve the Northern Ireland Protocol. Please give him and his government wisdom to make sensible decisions for peace and unity and for the good and health of all. We pray for Arlene Foster and Michelle O'Neill and our Northern Ireland Assembly. We pray for a good and indeed better working relationship between these women and all of our MLAs, especially asking for blessing on those who seek the good of the whole of our society rather than their own interests. We pray also especially for Robin Swan and those making careful decisions about our safe exit out of lockdown. Bless and give wisdom to him and them to lead us well in this. Finally, we give thanks and pray for those with authority in the church who must make decisions to best further the advance of God's kingdom. Thank you, Father, that as a church family at Mavilla, we have the blessing of being both Anglican and Methodist. So we pray for our Methodist president, Tom McKnight, our Anglican Archbishop, John McDowell, as well as our district superintendent, Philip Agnew, and diocesan bishop, David McClay, and all in leadership here at Mavilla. May all in leadership in your church seek the daily filling of your Holy Spirit, that they may hear what you are saying to your church. And we pray that all men and women leaders will be led more by Jesus, lead more like Jesus, and lead many more to Jesus. For your honour and glory. Amen. Now let's pray for our world by saying the words of this prayer on the screen. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for joining us uh, tonight. Please do tune in again at 7pm tomorrow when Lisa will be taking us through Psalm 73. But for now, good night and may the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen.